Hey everyone, it's 6.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12-12-2017, I guess. Today, I'm making this video, uh, not because I have anything solid, structured, or uh, definitive to present, because I don't. Um, and I'm going to do my best to take you through where I'm at, because if I wait to get to some sort of milestone in what's going on with what I'm studying. I don't know how long that will take, and I hope I will at least be successful in communicating to you what has been the issues so that you can better understand what I'm looking at, um, the bit that I'm understanding, and what I'm dealing with as far as the language goes um hebrew and that's that's all i've been looking at um the last time i even looked at classic greek was um when i was doing i, I was trying to write a paper on jews the translation jew and all of its occurrences in the Old and New Testament. And what they mean. You see, because there, there are, there's a very large faction of Christian identity that when they use the, the term Jew, um, they very much believe that what they're doing is they're speaking of a certain people that were labeled Jew because of the locale that they lived in, not because of their ethnic relationship to the house of Judah. So I had to write this paper and be very thorough. Um, and there are about four different words, five different words in Hebrew that are, are they're not that different. They're, they're variations of um, Yehuda. And then in the uh, New Testament, there's uh, many variations of Udeus. That's and it's translated as Jew. I keep hitting uh, the same sort of brick wall every time I try to do one of these papers that has to do with language. Now, in the case of that paper on Jews, I actually had gotten to the end and thought, okay, you know, I see this clearly. And um, I, can, I can proceed now uh, based on a, a good knowledge base. And what I had concluded from that is that um, Wideos actually refers more to an ethnicity than a, a locale. Um, I spent a lot of time on it. It's very painstaking. The unfortunate thing is, by the time I got to the end and figured, okay, you know, I've got this figured out. I went back and noticed that just as is the case with Strong's concerning the Hebrew, and Strong's, I guess the best I can say about Strong's right now, or any concordances that I'm aware of, is that for the most part they are a travesty to truth and good information. Um, so what I found out was that there are multiple variations of the root Wideos that are being used in a variety of, of different places that are not being, they're, they're being all bunched together and listed as one thing. Strong's does this terribly in the Hebrew. Um, uh, Strong's will will list a word as a certain number and then you will go to the actual text and you will see it in the text and let's say it ends with a so-called tav which I just call th or th but you go to the Strong's and it's not a, a tav it's uh, you you'll find a so-called he which I just call an e eh, which is equivalent to the English E. And that one character makes a difference. 
but they mislist it. So I'm not able to yet complete my paper on the Jews because that's still up in the air now. Because these things are not being properly listed and cataloged in their variations. And, you know, the, the truth can be too delicate a thing these days to not be absolutely accurate on terms. So putting that paper aside, I had begun moving forward in my study of the ancient Hebrew, the alphabet and the words. For some time, ever since I began reading Common Beaumont's Britain, the key to world history, even though I found Beaumont's conclusions to be farcical at best, and of course I got fed up with all of his misquoting of the Hebrew Scriptures, so I had to stop that, but during it I had to go and take a, a very objective look at the Scriptures and what started standing out to me as I w was simply reading through. I was reading through um, portions of uh, 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st uh, and 2nd Chronicles. And the problem was I was noticing all kinds of things that were talked about as though they were commonplace that absolutely are not commonplace in modern Palestine. The state of Israel. There are also a number of geographical anomalies that absolutely don't quite fit in that locale. Descriptive things from the Hebrew Scriptures that don't fit that locale. Now, I kind of got fed up with um, the amount of, of oddities that I was seeing that weren't working. Not with where we're told all of uh, these events from the Hebrew and the New Testament took place. They're not fitting. So I decided to go back, and I, I had been actually doing a comparison between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And I can tell you right now um, that I do believe that's two, that's two different events that are being described. Okay, um, the sixth day in Genesis chapter 1. I absolutely don't believe that Genesis chapter 2 is just a pickup and a further deeper descriptive of what we see on day 6 in Genesis chapter 1. The order is quite different. The terminology is quite different. And we'll, we'll get into that. I made a video about that actually a couple of weeks ago and didn't test my mic first, as I usually do, and the video didn't come through. So I thought, well, I'll just take that as maybe a, a sign to wait and learn more about all of this before I make a video about that. So I decided to do a bit of a study on directions. Because a long time ago, when I first started making videos, I made a video, I think it was called something like... Um, um, flat Earth uh, Directions and Map or something. I don't know. I've seen a, a handful of people have mirrored it. Um, if y you type something like that in, or, or Bible Directions and Map and you find something that's not listed under my name, um, if it's a video that is by... Um, buy the truth and sell it not production, that's me. 
So that's something I did a while ago. But what I pointed out in that video is that um, based on directions, uh, certain Bible stories are not accurate as per, and I, I just figured that we're talking about Palestine, that this stuff is going on in Palestine, or that the near, near you know, Near East, whatever they call it these days. They don't want to call it the Middle East anymore. It's a near, near ancient East. I don't know. I pointed out that uh, based on directions that w that we were being told, um, that things just didn't add up. That either we were going to have to look at the map in a very skewed way or the land masses in a very skewed way or something. Of course, at that point in time, I didn't realize um, the translational... Um, tuh, I, I can't... I don't even know the word for it. I'm... After this amount of time of looking at these things, uh, I think so much of what we think we know uh, about the Bible based on our most popular translations, that's got to be scrapped. I'm not saying the Bible needs to be scrapped. I'm not saying the Bible is not true. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the way it's been presented to us in every English translation I'm aware of. That's every single one. Again, they're all using they're all using the Masoretic lexicography. And you know, at this point in time, I uh, I don't even believe that the uh, the Reformation w was organic. Uh, there's, I've got no answers on anything, but I'll tell you, the more I study various things, the more I learn new things that I didn't know before, the more I would say that realities that I thought were pretty well fixed are being shattered more and more and more. Now, I'll show you a few issues that I've ran into because I decided that I wanted to at least establish a good uh, general sense of direction because one of the problems is when you read the Bible and you read various books in the Bible that describe places, uh, that describe, let's say, where the Israelites went when they were in the so-called wilderness. And I keep having to say these so-called because of my problem with the way that a lot of these words are translated and how they're used. I think a whole lot of them are translated to give these words a feel that is more Middle Eastern, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Sinai, Egypt. You know, instead of the, the promised land, you know, Eretz Yisrael and Matsurim, Matsurim is the uh, land or country that they were slaves in for over 400 years. Matsurim, get Egypt out of your head. And that's going to be one of the first things that a lot of, a lot of us that are looking into this, that are serious about it, are going to have to do. Get these modern names of modern places that make your mind instantly go over to the Middle East out of your head. Because it's one of the biggest crippling factors to understanding what's being told to us and where it all happened and what has happened since and who and where we are today. So let me see if I can 
describe this a little bit. So I started with directions. I decided I would start with east. And the reason I decided to start with east is because east is the first direction used in the Bible. And what you're going to do is you're going to see it in uh, Genesis 2.8 for the first time. Uh, because you'll read a verse that says, and um, I'm reading... I'm reading King James, but it has certain Hebrew words that are, are inserted in it, okay? So what you would get, you would say, And Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. It's Odin. It's Odin. And there he put the man, Adam, eh, Adam, whom he had Yitzar formed. It has a connotation of sculpting clay. It is not the words used in Genesis 1, bara. No, bara meaning often to fatten. No, no, this is sculpting. He eats our eh, Adam. So, Yahweh, Alaim, planted a gan, kadem. Oden. Now you might think that every time we go look for Kadem, we're going to see East. Kadem is 6924. Now, I don't know that the concordance here at Q Bible is going to be very transparent and open. And it's not. It's, it's going to give you occurrences. But let's see if we can get something that is a little more illustrative of what the deal with East is. Now remember, that is the first time we see any direction in, in the whole of the Bible. Now, it's preceded by a mean or, an, or a mem go back here it's an M it's an M M Kadem so when I make subsequent videos on these Hebrew characters remember I am going to be drawing a parallel between them and modern English letters and there is a direct parallel to almost every single one of them and the few that aren't You could speculate why it is we don't have modern equivalents of those, but there are very few of them, and you're going to see as we go along how amazingly similar English is to ancient Hebrew. So there's a an M Q D M M Kadem, and that means from Kadem. Say Gan in Oden, B in Oden. So Yahweh Elohim, Gan in Oden. But before it, it has the word for plant or fix, a fix, a Gan, Gan. If you find Ganan, you'll find that that means to surround or a fortress, a Gan, Gan in Oden, from Kadem, Uisham to put Sham. Ath et Adam, so he put him, which he had sculpted or formed. Now this, remember, from Kadem, Mem, meaning source oftentimes. It's believed by many that Mem is the pictograph for water or a liquid. I'm not 100% on that yet, okay? But every time you see that M preceding any word, it's going to be from so we can uh, go into uh, Esword in Genesis 2, 8, and um, 6924 is Kadem. And we can do Old Testament, a search on it <clears throat> every time we see it. Now at first, you'll be seeing it when you do that search 
as translated east, east, eastward, east. And of course we're looking at the King James translation because Strong's was encoded first to King James. Now there is some Strong's now that are encoded to um, New American Standard. Okay. Um, but since most softwares are set up for uh, King James encoding, that's, you know, that's what we got to use. So again, a lot of east, east side, east parts, eastward. And remember, when you look at these English translation, you don't know what's going on in the Hebrew beneath this, by the way. And then when you look at the Hebrew translations, you have to make sure, if you want to make sure, 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 what's going on here, you better find a single source manuscript. If you don't, you're just looking at a manuscript that a bunch of scholars um, took and they, they took parts of from various different manuscripts and just put together some hodgepodge, okay? Now, by the time we get to Deuteronomy 33.15, King James starts saying, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains. You're like, ancient? That's weird. Oh, and then in the same chapter, but De Deuteronomy 33.27, the eternal God is thy refuge. That's the same word, Kadem. I can prove it. I can go and show it to you in the Hebrew. That's Kadem. Why wouldn't they say the eastern God? Why don't they stay consistent? Eternal, Kadem. Okay, so we go east, east side, east, east, east. <laughs> Plenty of easts, don't get me wrong, of the east country, eastward. Oh, and then 2 Kings, 1925. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times? that I have formed it. Why didn't it just say Eastern times? Or Eastern. Well, we have East End. But then Nehemiah 12.46 For in the days of David and Asaph of old. Why didn't they say Eastward? It's of old. Of the East. Now Job 23.8 Behold I go forward. This is the same word folks. Job 29 too. Oh, that I were as in months past. Why not east? You'll find Psalm 55 19 of old. Psalm 68 33 of old. Psalm 74 2 of old. Of old. Of old. Of old. Of old. Yeah. I'm in the Psalms here. Of old, of old, east, ancient, ancient, ancient. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, some scholars might look at this and brush it off and say, well, that's just because east means forward, dummy. But why would it mean ancient? Why would it mean of old? Why would it be used for eternal or ever? And it is. So I thought that was really strange because not only does Kadem, but Kadamath. And the only thing I can figure with the <coughs> TH at the end would be a slight diminutive. And you can see Kadamath, um, as soon as uh, the rivers that are the four heads parted from, forget I said rivers, by the way, just forget I said rivers, and that's problem number two. So I'm still here in Genesis 2, and I'm looking at Kodem, and I'm thinking, is that east or is that older? Is that east or is that older? Are they synonymous? When Kadem is used, are they speaking of a place in a direction? But that place in that direction is far older. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying is 
is the issue, you see. So that by the time I've, I got to Kadamath, and the thing is, uh, Strong's lists it as Kadameh, which are very different words, Kadameh and Kadameh. Actually, Kadameh with the E eh at the end instead of the TH at the end changes the word in a very different way. Actually, when you go and you look at all the occurrences of Kadem in Strong's, and you trace them to the text, you'll find that oftentimes kudame is used. When you put that e eh or e at the end, depending on what kind of word it is, it changes it in various ways. So since I'm still here, and I've got to get to the root of what these things mean um, as early as I can, because that's going to establish a tone and a consistency for the rest of what I understand that the Hebrew scriptures are saying. So I've still been in Genesis 2 because there's other occurrences of Kadem. As I said, it's Kademeth with a TH at the end. And that's in relation to the bodies of water. Again, forget that I said river. The word is Nair. N E R, the so called Nun He Resh, N E R, Ner. When you do a cross reference of Ner, you'll be surprised at what you find. Because we've all got this, we've all got this idea in our head. Because it's been planted in our heads. We have to follow the evidence in the Bible. And I've got bad news for all of you folks who say, well, I can get everything I need to out of the Bible by just reading my favorite translation. You're not going to get very far. Sorry. Now listen, Yahweh did promise to preserve his word. But he didn't promise to make it perfect for you in English. Let's establish that. He didn't promise that. And for anyone who just thinks, well, I deserve it. I deserve it to be perfect and preserved perfectly for me in English. Don't think for one thing you understand how open ended a language English is. Besides the fact that it has a fiat lexicography, whereas the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, has a fixed lexicography. Let's be very clear about that. A fiat lexicography means that you are getting the meanings of those words from what somebody else just plain said it means. A fixed le lexicography means that you, with a lot of study and hard work, figuring out what these characters are and what they mean, and then how they work together, and the syntax, and the idioms, and a whole lot of prayer, can figure out their fixed lexicography. That means a meaning to these things in and of themselves so that nobody on the outside can tell you this means what I say it means because you can quite simply look at the word and say, no, those characters, they say something different than what you say. That's what's so important about this. The ancient Hebrew has a fixed lexicography. Modern English and every Bible translation in it has a fiat lexicography. 20% is the round number, and I got a feeling it might be higher. You see, the thing is, they couldn't really hide all of the basic 
language um, functions of the wording. They couldn't do it. They're not smart enough or brilliant enough to hide the word of the living God. But so many descriptive words, they changed. And they changed the meaning of. They hid the meaning of. Now, believe me, I'm not entirely finished. I'm not even close to finished with understanding the, um, the textual puke that I see um, the Masoretic Nikud to be. I'm, I'm learning about it daily. But at the same time, I'm having to learn the ancient Hebrew apart from their puke. And the more I look into this, the more uh, anger, righteous anger, I have against all of these people who have brought us the modern versions of the Bible. So in Genesis 2, in 2.10, typically you'll see a river went out of Eden, it's Odin, to water the Gan, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Let's start with river. I told you it's Nair, 5104 in Strong's. We can go to our E sword. We're still in two, 210. And let's click on Nair, Old Testament. Okay. First off, if you, if you use Blue Letter Bible and you punch in English words and then go to lexicon, you'll find that there are so many different Hebrew words that they translate as the exact same English word. You'll find sometimes that there's a singular Hebrew word translated into a multitude of English words. And I wish that was the only problem. So what's interesting is, you know, they can get by with calling these things, you know, river, 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 you see, all through Genesis, river, river, river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates. It's not Euphrates, it's Parath. Three characters, P, R, Th, Parath, Euphrates. Now again, so they're getting by with saying river, river, river. Okay. Now oh, it's interesting. So. Makes you kind of scratch your head, though, when you get to Joshua. And you say, gosh, I wonder what the King James people were thinking here in Joshua. Because in Joshua 1.4, the King James reads from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even which Lebanon, white with an extra nun at the end, it could mean a diminutive white. And it, it definitely does seem to seem to be north of the promised land. I'm not 100% on that yet, but it certainly seems to be north of the promised land. White with cedars and firs in abundance. Okay. Even unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now that should be Ner. Ner Parath. All the land of the Hathi, Hathi, actually, sorry, Hathi, Hittites, Hathi, unto the great Yam, towards the going down, and that's going to be Mabu'a Shemesh. And I haven't gotten into Mabu'as yet, but so, so shall be your coast. I want you to consider how far away the, uh, the current river Euphrates is from the Mediterranean. Now, in Joshua 24, 2, and Joshua said unto all the people, thus saith Yahweh Alaim, 
of Yisrael, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. Now, people who are just absolutely glued to their King James translation get tripped up on this, and they say, he must be talking about the people before the flood of Noah. Well, guys, I hate to break it to you, but the word is ner. You can see it in Genesis 2, ner. He says it again, and I took your father Abraham. This is Yahweh speaking. I took your father Abraham from the other side of the ner flood. Abraham wasn't alive before the Noatic flood. But there they say, flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, multiplied his seed. Okay, so now I would, this might still be Yahweh talking. Now therefore fear Yahweh, it is him, and serve him in sincerity, oh it might be Joshua, and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served. On the other side, Eber. Actually, it's Ober. Our forefather was Ober. Oberi. We are Oberi. This language is Oberi. Ober, which means to cross or over, served on the other side of Ner, and they say the flood, and in Matsurim, and serve ye Yahweh. They use flood again. I'm not kidding you. Your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood. Because the word is ner. Ner parath is in Genesis 2.10. Now, we get to 2 Samuel 8, 3. David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at ner parath. That's quite a border. Should we look at a map? We can look at a map. Yeah, we can. Yeah, no problem. I got a map right here. So this map doesn't, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily emphasize rivers. We would need a river map, you know, to emphasize the river. But if you if you zoom in, um, a lot of these roads, you know, or borders or whatever, they follow what is the Euphrates, okay? And it goes up and there's, there's Lake Assad. So you can see that it's like this, you know. It's just snaking through the Middle East, whatever they call it. So, yeah. So then we would have to believe, and I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm telling you, we would have to believe that David's empire was from the Euphrates, okay, all the way to here. You see all of this. And, and let me tell you something about all of this. This is not nice terrain all through here, by the way. None of it is. Um, all in through here is desert and they say that basically almost nobody wants to travel this way I see we got looks like we've got a road right through there I bet you that is a hellacious road right there but before there would have been this road they say nobody wanted to travel that so they would say people would travel really up the cusp of the Euphrates and then come down maybe before the mountains of modern day uh, Lebanon, and you see you have modern day Damascus going down into modern day is not real. These things are important to keep in mind concerning travel times and whatnot. So, then what they're going to try to tell you is that Aram is over here, or Padam Aram, which is where Abraham. Um, you know, Isaac and Jacob's people, where this is supposed to be where Laban was, where Jacob went, you're going to see problems with that too. 
you're going to see all kinds of problems with travel times described. If you read and pay close attention to travel times and then go back and look at cities and places and line them up with where they're supposed to be and start figuring out travel times. Why are some travel times so amazingly fast? over what should be very long distances? And then why are some travel times amazingly slow over what should be very short distances? So they're going to try to convince us that, n that the river Euphrates is Ner Parath. Ner Parath. Ner waterway. A waterway. I don't know that it is a river because there are so many different Hebrew words which are used for river. It's really hard to say and that's why I'm studying the characters so that I can understand their inherent lexicography. So anyways you'll see that Nair shows up a lot. Um, um, Oftentimes, it's very interesting, is that it's even used um, just synonymously with parath. Um, and these translations, are just, they're just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Hmm. Job 14.11, as the waters fail from the sea and the flood decays and dries up. So that does that have to be river? He shall not see the rivers, the floods. The floods, that's the word. They already used another word for rivers. Seriously. Yeah. They just use palage for rivers. And now there's nair. And then you've got brooks, which is... Nahal. It's just amazing. Okay. Which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood. So trust me on this, it doesn't have to be river per se. And now the four that you have, I've seen every kind of translation possible turning these the four names of these this four bodies of water i don't know that they're rivers they seem to be some kind of body of water okay and the nair it's also a nair actually that proceeds from oden to water the gan um body of water i haven't figured these things out but the um, many Mayim waters cannot quench love. Um, neither can the floods drown it. Hmm. Well, I could go into a lot of uh, examples concerning Nur what they translate oftentimes as river and things that don't seem to add up very well especially travel times and such now consider something because I've gone on 44 minutes and I'm I'm trying to give you a very good idea of let me see if I can boil this down into my main point I can't I can't stress enough that everybody in the sound of my voice that has any passion, any desire for the truth of Scripture, um, you have to look closer at these things. Yeah, you have to. No, 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 not everybody's gift is going to be language. That's true. It is. But you guys got to work at this. Yeah, you, you have to work at this. Do your own little part and, and actually work. 
because we're, this is really far gone now in the sense of what has been done to uh, our original Hebrew scriptures. Yahweh is good to his word because he has preserved his word. It's there. It's there. We have to do the work and especially the prayer to get understanding of what these things mean. Because I'm telling you, the more words I'm learning, the more characters I'm beginning to understand. And the more I am piecing all these things together, I am seeing a history, a people, a land that is quite foreign to the ones that I was brought up being taught were. So this is kind of my whole point, and it's why uh, to this point. I haven't even come out with uh, a video uh, just really showcasing uh, the second character in the Hebrew alphabet. It's so-called Bet. B. There's so much work to be done. I think I'm only, I'm only in uh, the 6100s of doing my um, Hebrew word, uh, root, root word search. Sorry. And I had to try to give you a, a quick update and appraisal on where I'm at. I've got, I've got no real solid answers to anything yet. I've got a whole lot more questions though. And I'm seeing a whole different world than I thought once was. So I just had to get that out. Hopefully I'll be back soon with actually some things that are a little more solid, but this is going to take time. Everything is, everything is linked together. Places, names, situations, events, happenings, they're there. They're there. And this can be figured out. And as I've said before, the rewards are great. Because the rewards are truth. The rewards are Yahweh. The rewards are the living God. His word is life and his truth. So they're there. But it's going to take time. Like everything, it takes time. So, please, if you would, pray for me that I can do well and, uh, and understand these things as I go. So, take care, everybody. I will see you next time, hopefully with some more concrete stuff. Okay?